nerderotic.com. Welcome back to the Nerd Erotic Podcast. My name is Gary Beekler. I'm live in San Francisco, California, and I come to you from nerderotic.com. And with me once again is my good friend down in San Diego, California, Dennis Bethalkis. What is up, Dennis? Not much. It's just freaking hot, as you can tell, me being in my, my little uh, yeah. tank top here. Doing the sexy tank top thing. And yeah, it's yeah, it's it was, it was disgusting here. Uh, it, so uh, yeah, we don't always talk about whether maybe we do. But uh, San Francisco had its hottest day in its history uh, yesterday, hitting uh, hitting 106 in the city and recorded. I mean, damn. you know, the last couple hundred years, it probably was hotter some other time. But uh, damn, you know, the show must go on. And we still this is why we do this to forget stuff like this, you know. Uh, and uh, we also had San Francisco Comic Con today which was pretty amazing uh, it was a return to moscone center so uh wondercon abandoned us uh, a few years back uh to go to lovely yeah. orange county to go be yeah. bl- to go be a blandly competent comic con and uh the return to moscone it was it just reminded me of like the greatness of the, the cons in san francisco at moscone in particular were great and this one is it showed signs of it so and and I'm not kidding. At the time, Sa- San Francisco was growing like San Diego was about 15 years ago, and it would have been it could have been just as big. And they decided to pull up stakes and go to L.A. And uh, it turns out now that Comic Con was not being truthful with everybody, and they had every intention of leaving San Francisco and never coming back. So they were selling us a bill of goods that they might come back. Uh, it was total BS, by the way. Um, and they admitted that themselves. So we're glad to have a good Comic Con back and at a good time. It's at the end of summer. I love, I love this con. So we will be there next year for sure. Had a good time. Got some tick art for my background, and this will be some of our prize packages. Uh, so and they might grow as the episodes go on. So twenty dollar Amazon gift cards. Dennis has got some toys. We got these two art things. Uh, you comment. You subscribe on our YouTube channel, and you could win this stuff. All right, so let's get into the episode, man. Uh, it is secret yes. slash identity. Uh, yes. What do you think is behind the episode title? Because this show is turning out to be, you know, it's it's not like the Fox show where no, no. it was this just done purely for last. This is like got stakes, uh, a good bad guy. Uh, what, what do you think is behind this episode title? Uh, a couple of things. I mean, we have both, uh, well, the obvious secret identity. Because uh, we uh, ended episode two with Arthur being arrested and pleading um, the 28th Amendment, Murphy's Law, which we'll get into in a little bit here. Um, so to protect his secret identity as, you know, so he doesn't get mixed up in all this. Uh, also, who the tick is, because we don't know who the tick is. Uh, also, Dot, you know, not being truthful with Arthur and Arthur not being truthful with Dot. And then also what the suit is all about. So Miss Lint wants the suit, and we don't know why. Uh, Overkill wants the suit, we don't know why. Um, so you know, we, we got a couple of different meanings for secret identity on that secret slash identity. Yeah, and the tick has some opinions on these type of things too. He's not <laughs> really strong. down. Very strong <laughs> opinions, you know. Uh, you know, you know why bother what being a playboy where you can uh, suspension d- sus- alcoholic you know, alcoholic al- alcoholic playboy. playboy or you know <laughs> and you can uh, you get, uh, uh, what is it do you can give out justice 24 hours a day I'm paraphrasing I don't know yeah. <laughs> but oh my god <clears throat> so it starts out with Catman dude we get our watchman uh, uh, it gives us a little background on 28th amendment which is, as you said, Murphy's Law, which Arthur had pleaded when he got arrested. And it turns out Catman Dude uh, was outed by the FBI, or was it that agency? Uh, uh, it was by the cops, actually. It was so by the cops. He was arrested for supposedly mauling some people when actually he was set up by the mangler. Yes, they were mangled, yeah. not mauled. Yes. There's a distinction. And so uh, he his persona his uh, secret identity was outed in the news so he was man's murph murphy and later on <laughs> i can't make this up that's what it was uh, and later on the mangler went to his house and basically murdered his wife and children and no, his, puma, his puma wife and litter, litter of, children, of children which was messed up on a whole bunch of levels <laughs> 
Uh, oh my god! So that's that's where Murphy's Law came about. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> He also yeah, looked I, after uh, wayward circus animals or something like that. Yeah, his farm was a, a home for wayward circus animals. Yes, yes it and it looks like he married one of them. <laughs> so, <laughs> oh my God. So, yes, we had our little Watchmen moment, which was great. Um, but I also thought that was a little bit of foreshadowing on what the what what the terror might be up to if he's alive. We're 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 still wondering if he, the terror is alive because so far the terror is dead. Uh, as mm -hmm. as we speak, he's been dead for ten years. Uh, all they found was his teeth in a crater made of him by Superion. Yep. Uh, and Arthur is still hot on the tail. Now Arthur Arthur doesn't want to be a hero. He just wants to turn you know get enough evidence on the terror and and turn him in. That that's where he's standing right now. And he and yeah. he's got this suit that uh, that the tick got him and it's it's what what an upgrade from the comics which was just a pair of pajamas basically uh it's actually a pretty cool suit um yeah it's, it's a carbon fiber weave that we find out with gel in, in there and it's bulletproof it's fireproof electricity proof obviously since we saw in episode two it took a little uh, jolt from miss lint um yeah it's got some good qualities there and it uh, looks like a little impact resistance as well can't understand the operating system though. It's gonna be yeah. a, it's a little tough. Uh, that was a cool little scene though. When when the you know <laughs> I like it, the storytelling is it, that's how good the storytelling is. When the moth puts on his suit like this dorky character and it's cool, you're like, oh damn, that is cool. You know, the, right now the Tick is doing superhero better than most movies that are not Marvel. Yep. You know, and and they're not even trying. You know, that's, that's how, that's how this is. So, uh, the people involved in this, like this episode is written by David Fury. Uh, if you're a Buffy fan, you know who David Fury is, or even an angel fan. Uh, this guy's, you know, was kind of Joss Whedon's right-hand man for a long time and he, really good writer. Really. And I, I don't know if he's writing all the episodes. He's written a couple so far. He, you know? he writes all of them. Yes. He does. Uh, yeah. This, this guy's the, first awesome. one. the first one was, uh, Ben Edlin. And, and Ben Edlin's probably you know, laying out this whole thing. I mean, he's, oh, yeah. this, you know, and they're taking stuff directly out of the comic. Like there's a scene, we'll talk about it in the next, uh, in the next podcast. The opening scene is from a comic book. It, when the eight, when the doctors were talking to him about, uh, <laughs> so tell us what happened. <laughs> he's all, it was like, he was looking for a place to put his knife <laughs> and yeah. no place was good enough. <laughs> <laughs> and it cuts back to those scenes where the blood is just spurting out. Ah, oh, man. And that's what's making this thing great. You know, uh, I was watching it with my friend, and there's a couple F bombs dropped. And he's like, Whoa, what was there cussing in this? I'm all, oh, yeah, this thing's real, man. This thing's dark. It's, yeah. you know, you know, you just go back and watch that origin. Um, I was, uh, my wife right now, as we speak, is watching the first episode. I wanted to, and, and we watched that or that origin of uh or well, not the origin but the the death of the flag five and she's like what am i watching this is this is dark <laughs> i'm all yeah this shit is really dark <laughs> that's what's great about it yeah that's what you know that's what makes it, it it's a slow boil to these jokes that's why so yeah it's good stuff it really is it's uh some really good stuff we find out the name of the guy too that uh, is doing all the killing in the alley uh there and he goes by the name of overkill Overkill, who is quickly becoming my favorite character, which <laughs> there must be something wrong with me. <laughs> Move it, jackass. <laughs> and you, as time goes on, you can tell he's kind of new at being the badass thing. He like mm -hmm. uses jackass a little bit too much. And you find out he starts quoting other things. <laughs> you know, you just find out that he might be just kind of a poser. <laughs> like he's really good at fighting, but the actual yeah. meanness, he might be a poser. Yeah, he's um, taking it from. We'll find that out in episode four when we get. Yeah. Uh, so, so after uh, they're interrogating Arthur and they need to get his uh, registration number and his name, mm -hmm. and uh, so they're all, "What's your superhero name?" And he's all, "Arthur." And he's all, "That's your superhero name?" Yes, that's my superhero name. That's not the name I use. So he's going to be known as Arthur. Um, and that, the real quick cut to um to the credits was when he finds out it was overkill. He's all that was overkill. So overkill is obviously known in this universe. Yes. Um, and has a bit of a reputation. So, um, 
you know, each city, and that's the uh, one of the things from rewatching because it's got depth. Each city in this world that we're currently in, the city, uh, has its own superhero, and the, uh, this city just lost theirs. Kind of, you know, Allah, uh, and they mentioned it in in passing when Arthur's in a car and they're listening to a radio show. They're talking about it's kind of like losing a sports team, <laughs> except. Our sports team got their eyes eaten out with weaponized syphilis and shot to death. <laughs> so they don't have soups here. So, so their agency's not really active. Um, so, you know, when Arthur pleaded the 28th, they were just kind of like, oh, God, it's a lot of paperwork, you know, typical cop stuff. Yeah, it's um, going to take a while for an agency agent to come in. So they're just basically processing and they're going to take his picture and sent him on his way. Yep, and they got video of Overkill. They saw it's actually Overkill. So they're, they're letting him go, and then the tick pops up again, <laughs> right? And he has to have the talk yes. with Arthur. <laughs> yes, because he's. I noticed uh, some of the work you did back there was a little murdery. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, dude. So, uh, yeah, he thought he was going to have the talk, and that's what he finds out. You know, Arthur's like, yeah, that wasn't me. He's all, whoo, thank God. Well, I love the uh, also the the miss. Uh, he goes, that was overkill. You can say that again. No, no, no. it was by a guy named Overkill. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so it's really great writing, and I mean, even though you see the obvious pun coming, it's still funny. <laughs> it is. It is. So yeah, he you know he, he the tick he still kind of thinks uh you know the, the tick is a nuisance to him arthur still doesn't want any part of it he goes back to his apartment uh he tells tick to just go bail um leave me alone and he sneaks arthur, up to yeah arthur explains he has a real job that he needs to get to with yep. fish ladder and son's accounting firm uh and so he has to get some sleep so that in the morning he can you know go to work and uh that was when the tick says you know secret identity I have very strong feelings about this. <laughs> yes, I have opinions about this, Arthur. Uh, yeah, so um, uh, when Arthur goes up to his apartment, he's uh, he the, the Miss Lint is up there. Yep. Right, and uh, she confronts him, and she's been sitting in his apartment for a while, so she figures out that he's looking for the terror, mm -hmm. and which you know this is is the reason she probably just doesn't kill him right away. Um, well, so he has and, the suit uh, she, on too. He has the suit, and she, you know, she's like wondering what's the big deal about this damn suit anyway. Um, and what we find out is that like th there's been multiple. I don't know if, if there've been multiple suits, but there've been multiple weapons taken. And uh, you know, Arthur, you know, he's got nothing to hide, so he tells Miss Lint, you know, he's like, yeah, there's just been these locations where there's a bunch of things taken, and that's why I think the terror might be alive. And she's like, oh, I would have known it. He would have told me, and you know. Because she was, you know, well, she's obviously in love with him for some reason, or I don't know if it's a fatherly love or if it's, uh, you know, I think or, it's a fatherly thing. Like, I don't think you're the one weird. person who took a chance on me. Yeah, you know. Um, well, the, the funny thing is, is when he mentions Overkill, you know. Uh, oh yeah, goes, Overkill. Did he say anything about me? Did he say anything to you about me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know, we get the little flirtation thing, and she's he's like, No, why would he? She's little like, no, flirtation. She goes, she does the little hair flip. Yes. Yeah, he didn't say anything about me. And and you know, with dude, I love her little psycho eye, mm -hmm. uh, glass eye that she's got going on, and that the little piece of lint that falls on. So, what are you looking at? Nothing. <laughs> <laughs> oh man. Oh. So, like, yeah, Miss Lint just eats screen time. She's so freaking funny. Yara Yara Martinez is her name. So yes. she's she's rather good. Um, and she knocks out Arthur and takes his suit. Yes. And r when she knocks him out, he goes into like a little nightmare mode and this the nightmare mode, I had to watch it a couple times to figure out that it really tells you a lot. Yes, it does. Okay. So, um, in the nightmare, you are little Arthur, but then you're flipping back and forth to adult Arthur, which gives it like a cool little surreal feel. So he's in the kid's he's in the kid's clothes, but he'll flip back from young to old Arthur. And you see his dad walking in a room and his dad's all, I'm going out flying today, you know, and he's playing with the, 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 the flag five. And we get to see all the flag five members, uh, who are, I don't know. Um, was it doc Sampson Atlas? Um, not doc Sampson. Uh, not, not, oh, it's, uh, it's, here, hang on a sec. I have a list of them. Um, yeah. Just one. Oh, I got a list right here. So it's a Christian soldier. Midnight, Mighty Atlas, Sedona, Sharpshooter, and Uncle Samson. Correct. And uh, there's also the dog Onward, who Onward. was with Chris with Christian Soldier. And um, 
you see the toys and Onward, Christian soldier yeah. atlas i want i want to point out that atlas has antennas just like the tick yes okay so um i i think there's something to do with that because right when <laughs> arthur's father walks in he gets killed in the dream by overkill uh, who then takes his mask off and becomes the terror. But on the poster behind Overkill is a poster of Straight Shooter. Sharp. Straight Shooter, yes. I wanted to mention, actually, I forgot or to sharp mention. Shooter, sorry. Sharp Shooter. Did um, I say Straight Shooter or is it Sharp Shooter? It was Straight Shooter, I think. Straight Shooter, okay. Yeah. Um, I If you notice that the, uh, what is it, the uh, the five... Um, what are they called again? The, the Fab Five? The Flag Five. The flag, flag Five. five. Yeah. <laughs> um, they all have aspects that the, is blended into the tick. And, you know, we, we have this theory that maybe the tick has sprung from Arthur's mind. Yes. And I'm thinking this is the cohes cohesion between this. It's, Arthur has mentioned that the Flag Five was his favorite superhero. He lost his favorite superhero team and his father. And that psychological break could be what created the tick and blended all these things together to have the tick come out. So what's super about Arthur then that, you know, that he can create this superhero like out of, out of freaking nowhere, you know, um, it, it's, it, you know, I hope there's more to it than that. I hope it's not just a, 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 a like a Fight Club manifestation that turns corporeal. I mean, that's still cool. They, it looks like they are starting that. It looks that way to me. I just hope it's something. I, I was kind of hoping he was Atlas or related to Atlas. You know, I don't know his powers, but the antennas definitely uh, are a red flag for me. That uh, that that there is some kind of connection to the Flag Five. They must be a manifestation or. Uh, a create he's an he's an android he's an alien i don't know uh kind of like what overkill you know overkill might have been saying so when overkill's fighting him you know he's like what is or when he's watching him he's like what is this guy is he you know is he, is is he an android genetic mutation uh he's got no memories past uh when he met arthur um but definitely ago. um sharpshooter yeah. or whatever it's sharpshoot god damn. straight shooter Straight shooter is definitely overkill, like without a doubt, because he's the one who got his hands broken. Uh, he's got bionic eyes. Um, there's also a connection uh, with him later on when they take, you know, when you see him take his mask off, there's he's got a scar right above his eye that looks just like the scar that's over the eye of Miss Lint. Yep. Um, and we haven't figured out why she lost her eye yet. You know, and it seems like Anybody who gets around the terror loses their eye, maybe. I don't know. Uh, the, 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 we're we're going to find out. There's a lot of mysteries to find out. And honestly, um, we don't find this stuff out this season. So uh, there's, a, there's a lot to, or maybe we do. And I just I think we find out in the it. second half of the season. Yeah. Which we don't know when it comes out yet. I hope they yes. announce that soon. Me too. Um, yeah. So, uh, th yeah, th th that that dream sequence, besides being very cool, actually actually had a lot of answers. I thought, yes. or, or a lot of teases, a lot of foreshadowing going on. And I also, um, and I mentioned before, that I think uh, well, I don't, want, I can't mention that. Sorry. Never mind. That's for now because we're we're only doing this seven episode at a time. <laughs> yeah, <I don't laughs> Sorry. Hey, we did get a response. We got a couple responses. People said they wanted us to do it an episode at a time. So nice. Here exactly. we are doing it, everyone, and we're going to spread these out. Uh, you know, I'm probably over a couple weeks. I think no, not no longer than that though. It depends. You know. Um. All right. So, uh, we also after the dream sequence, we uh, get um. The, well, it's the terror. That uh, that's th that you know takes the masks off. Uh, we also get uh, like in a news report in the background that a gardener was it well, a gardener? We get uh, Arthur waking up on the floor yeah. and realizing he needs to get to work because he's late at this yeah. point. So he's getting dressed. He runs down to the corner shop, and we see on the TV. Well, there's two things. We get a mention of the bee population being depleted worldwide, uh, and then it goes into the very large man. Uh, who is uh, a gardener that was assaulted in his van with radioactive material. He was sprayed with some kind of radioactive material. And he's growing at an exponential rate. So they're calling him the, the very large man. Uh, who they call 
Jurgen. We, we actually have the tick has been sitting inside the, the shop waiting for Arthur this entire time. Oh, is it okay? We're okay back at the yeah. corner shop, and he's yeah. with uh, Goat's mom. The Goat's mom, yes, and who he rescued her kitten, and basically. Uh, Arthur just keeps reiterating, hey, you know what? I, I don't want to be a superhero. You know, if you want to find uh, this overkill guy, go for it. And, uh, you know, can you give me a basic description, chum? Because sure, he's all dressed in black, has a skull face, and smells like death. <laughs> <laughs> I can't go I can't go for, further than that. <laughs> so, <sighs> so that's uh, what Tick is going out to do is go and find overkill. Yep, and Arthur has to go to work, and Arthur gets put with uh, Jurgen, uh, uh, who, and yeah. doesn't like it, and does uh, he, I decline your apology, and then goes in uh, like an Alex Jones rant. Obviously, he's a uh, Alex Jones who talks about like uh, fluoride in the water and fake news, and it's pretty funny. And then he keeps going and going and going, and, and he gets to the fluoride in the water, but then he starts making a point about the very large man he's all his lungs are too big he, if he was that tall he couldn't breathe it doesn't make it's sense it's all fake yeah <laughs> they just want to what was it uh it's a, all the snowflakes putting out fake news yeah and, we've all worked with a year again in our life um yeah it was funny okay so and uh, i i did love there there is a couple of tick lines in there too uh when he's talking to arthur uh, when Arthur suggests that the tick go and look for overkill and the tick says, now that's the cell for my burning itch. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh and then God. also uh, mono a us. Oh yeah. It just mono a us. Mm -hmm. And then my other favorite one, which was fighting the ever churning butter churners of evil. Yes. <laughs> uh, it's awesome. Um, and then we also get Dot saying, reminding Arthur that, uh, uh, she calls him up and basically says, Hey, um, can you go and pick up this cake for Walter, their stepdad's 60th birthday, which is setting up the, our next episode, but still, uh, that, that's a little bit, you know, Arthur's stepdad is pretty funny. Yes. Uh, he's also in the expanse. Uh, he plays Jules Pierre Mao. One of our big bad guys in the expanse but he's plays a pretty funny character in this one yeah um so and that's also like in the when arthur daydreams at work he gets that uh, little a vision of the terror which is like another really good one like you know like not that thing not that i'm really scared but it's like a, a it's a good scary villain his eyes start glowing and and he starts going into a ramp like you know that little pain in my that your head that's me uh, yeah, what's that, that line? Feel between your eye sockets. That's me nailing up black light posters. Nailing up my black light posters. Uh, you know, it, it's and honestly, um, oh my god, what's his name again? It's uh, Jack Earl Haley. Jack Earl Haley. He plays a variation of the same thing. You know, I, I mean, his character in the pre in Preacher is just a quiet version. It's all a version of his Rorschach, <laughs> basically. You know, uh, which hey, if you're gonna go with something, go with something that worked. Um, I am a fan of the Watchmen movie and particularly of Ro Roy Shack. I might be one of the only ones, but I am. Yes. Uh, and oh, no, I'm not the only one. Uh, my friend Derek loves it too. We, we both love it. But uh, uh, so we, we have Arthur waking up from his dream, his nightmare there at the desk and the tick shows up at work and knocks on the window. He's outside the building knocking on the window and Arthur tells him to come over to the other window. He opens it up and says, what are you doing here? He goes, when are you going to leave this, this work thing? He goes, you know, I, I get it. He goes, but you know, you've been here for a long time. He goes, I, I haven't been here even an hour yet. I know it's so <laughs> impressive. <laughs> I know. And uh, what he was doing was he forgot who he was looking for. And then he got, uh, it took him a half, or half an hour to get out of a bus terminal, <laughs> which is kind of a callback to the, the cartoon. You know, because mm -hmm. he used to guard a bus terminal or a bus yeah. stop. Yeah, that was a nice little throwback there. Um, and he, they, the people there kicked him out, so he went to guard the city. Um, but that's when we find out that, uh, you know, th that he's got a memory problem. And, and we, yeah. it, you, you start to feel so. You see Arthur actually go, oh, this poor guy. I mean, it's like, do you have no memory? Have you had a head injury or something like that? So we've gone over every possible. That was both of Tick's or origins from previous 
incarnations was um, not a head injury per se, but he was crazy. And uh, there was a lot of, uh, they were alluding that he was crazy, had yes. a lot of head injuries. Um, and I don't think that's going to be the origin. Um, no. Uh, but I, I love the mystery of it. I actually hope they don't tell us right away. I hope they get, kind of give it to us in pieces because you could really run with this. It could be really interesting. There's a few things he says because he says he can't remember anything before the last few days and he gets a little confused when Arthur isn't around. Yeah, yeah. So he has to be in proximity with Arthur. Yes. Um, and uh, Joseph, our house guest, was asking that. Like, is he always with Arthur in the room? And I'm like, no, but he's always near him. Like yeah. if he gets too far away, he starts losing it. So, uh, he definitely couldn't be Atlas, <laughs> uh, the human GPS or a me maybe, a, well, head injury shot in the head. Maybe, I don't know. Tell us what you think. There's definitely a pretty good mystery there. I think. Yeah. Um, so of course this, this all happens with overkill. Um, we see overkill across the street as the tick leaves and overkills on top of the building watching Arthur. And uh, he, of course, sets off the building fire alarm to get everyone out of the building. And Arthur goes back to grab his backpack, which he has stuffed some files in uh, of the um, what he's looking at for the, the terror. And that's when Overkill suddenly shows up and says, give me the suit, jackass. <laughs> <laughs> Calls him jackass a lot. Listen, jackass. Lot. Yeah. <laughs> and... Uh, He's like, I don't have the suit, you know, Miss Lint, uh, you know, took it. And of course, that's where we get the Miss Lint. Did she say anything about me? <laughs> <laughs> <I know. laughs> and, uh, then, and then the biggest difference, uh, again, from uh, the Fox live action series is we start. This is where we get, you know, some more like actual superhero shit. We get a, a superhero fight. Um, yes. And uh Yeah. <clears throat> Uh, overkill, you know, Tick comes in, Overkill throws a little puck that looks like a hockey puck bomb. He's all, your hockey puck is sending me a message. It has a message. It has a message. It's right between his legs and it blasts him right in the balls. He's all, ha, 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 quite a kick. <laughs> you know, <clears throat> and then uh, there's a pretty, actually, it's a pretty funny fight. Uh, and it's kind of, you know what? It kind of reminded me of Iron Fist and uh, Luke Cage a little bit. <laughs> the Iron Fist and Luke Cage fight, except a little funnier. And, uh, yeah, um, so as they're fighting, they're destroying the office and the tick is like, you're going to clean this up. Uh, when he hangs on the ticks, uh, little okay. antennas, that's a weakness. Um, and he's all oh, stop touching my nerves or whatever he was saying. Yeah. You're, you're on my nerves. Yeah. Is, has that ever been a thing? I can't yeah. remember. Yeah? yeah. Okay. So if you grab his antennas, it, it's kind of like, kicking him in the balls maybe or something like that or yeah the cartoon actually uh played yeah with okay it has been years since i've seen that actually i just acquired the cartoon i will be watching it again but yeah i haven't seen the cartoon since the 90s holy crap um not a lot of people yeah, have so, it because of fox but you know well that's fox um I, well i wonder how ben Edley got the rights away uh, i probably just timed out yeah i hadn't done anything with it for so long i just reverted back to him so it ends with the tech being thrown out a window by overkill. And uh, mm -hmm. that's where we end this uh, wonderful, uh, really good episode. Uh, this is where it's, I mean, there isn't a bad point in the series, but it really starts picking up. And these, these last few episodes are great. It, it, I, man, I don't want to wait too long because uh, it does end in a funny place, but we will talk about that. Um, I think it's, what is it? 13 episodes or 12 in total? Or 12. are they not said it's 12. 12. So we get six yeah. more. And uh, in the fall, you know, I was thinking earlier, um, considering that they've come out and publicly said they don't want people to binge watch this the way they've set up the episodes. It's like they want people to binge watch it, especially with the cliffhangers after every the end of every episode leading straight into the next episode. Yeah. So. so I think what they did was they made it that way and changed their mind. We talked about it in the last couple of podcasts. I don't know if the binge formula works. I don't I don't know if it's a good thing or not. Yeah, I mean, you can go either way with this. And quite honestly, as we said before in earlier the earlier um, episodes of this, you can take this in many different ways, this this series. You can take it at face value and just be comedy or, you know, dark uh, superhero parody, if you will, uh, dramedy. 
or you can get into the multifaceted layers of all this stuff and also the comics. And I mean, cause they're making fun of a lot of things. They're making fun of Watchmen. They're making fun of DC Marvel, uh, you know, the alcoholic playboy and the, uh, you know, the billionaire persona, all that kind of thing. That's a definite jab at both Batman and Iron Man right there. Um, and uh Catman dude, you know, uh, <laughs> that that's the Watchmen. The Watchmen. Oh, yeah, there's th- th- there's so much more they can do and they will do. Yeah. Uh this isn't even the funniest episode. The funniest episode is yet to come. Uh and I can't wait to podcast about it. Uh but th- yeah, the th- the thing about the binge watch, ooh, man, we could do a whole podcast on that. I think it's uh yeah, I think it's bad. I will come on the side that it is bad. It it get, it it puts things out of your mind too. It does it doesn't stay current long enough. I you know people binge watch it and it's done, and then you have the people meandering along and watching it, but there's no conversation about it. It's not in the headlines. It's it's like a movie that does okay, and and in the middle of summer, uh, it you know it's kind of like Planet of the Apes. You know it it Planet of the Apes probably would have been better if it was released at a later time. It was within a bunch of Marvel movies and is really respected and loved and completely forgotten about in a week. That's kind of what binge dropping a binge series is, especially when you're surrounded by a bunch of other series. And you also lose that whole, uh, you know, what they used to call the water cooler effect where everyone stands around the water cooler and discusses what they watched on TV the night, be- night before. That's what this is. This is. Yeah, exactly. that's what we are. That you lose the the, the recappers and <clears throat> and reviewers doing it uh, at the same time every week, because um, there is a group of people, a large group of people, who after a show they like, go straight to YouTube like a post game show of football. You know, um, mm-hmm. so yeah, you lose that, and I that's that's free promotion. Uh, you know, I love. I love how all our videos get automatically demonetized now. I know it's part of the algorithm, and I know we're not controversial and everything, but we just get hit like within three seconds. I mean, you know, uh, and and we are basically a commercial for the tick. Okay, we're not saying anything bad about it. I mean, we, you know, we do criticize the hell out of other stuff, but for the tick, <laughs> I mean, we're my pom poms, dude. <laughs> I, I'm gonna jump up and down. Uh, yeah, so, so whatever. Uh, we love this freaking show. I don't care if nobody's watching these videos. We are going to do all six, and I can't wait to do the next six, and I can't wait to do next episode. So do remember to leave a comment and subscribe because that puts you in the running for our growing tick prize package, which includes these two wonderful pieces of art I just bought at San Francisco Comic Con, some toys from Dennis, a $20 Amazon gift card, and some other stuff that we're going to think of later. Uh, any final words, Dennis? Uh, don't let the door hit your ass on the way out, America. And may the small folks sing songs of your greatness. Oh, and also, uh, all of our links are in the description below. Good night, everybody. Spoon! Spoon! You have been listening to the Erotic Podcast. Please subscribe. <laughs>